Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for this morning, Lord. Thank you that the sun is still in the sky. So many simple things we forget to thank you for, Lord. Thank you for this building, this place, and what's going on here, Lord. Lift us up. Bless us up. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Okay. So, I was talking with someone, and we were talking about how I... Because of who I am and where I have come from, and the majority of us come from a similar background, that it isn't just about drugs, alcohol. It's about what this Bible sermon is about, is about life, right? Today's issue is prominent about alcohol and drugs, but this is really just about life. So if you, if you weren't a drug addict, this sermon pertains just as much to the rest of the world as it does specifically towards us. So I kind of looked at it a little bit, and, and part of it was psychological books started coming out about 150 years ago. That's where they decided, the world decided, what's wrong with us in our mind and how they're going to fix it. About 85 years ago, this little group of guys got together and started a thing called AA. About 65 years ago, another group of guys got together and they decided to start another thing and call it NA. And about 2,500 years ago, some guys got together and wrote a book that will give you more explanations than what these people have decided it is. But what am I willing to listen to? What do I follow? Right? As soon as I'm in trouble, I go and I want to find out what the psychological book says. I want to know what the doctors say about this. Now, I want to go to AA because AA starts me out to get my mind clear and then find God. So the big book sends me to the bigger book so that I can learn how to experience life. In 1 John 2.16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. And that's what the attack is. My flesh wants to follow those things in life. Now, in following those things in life, the world tells me that I have some disorder, right? The Bible just told me this is what my eyes and my mind are going to chase. It doesn't say I have the disorder of the lust of the eyes or the disorder of the pride of life or the disorder of the flesh. It says this is what my body does. There's no proof of what those people say. There's no psychological proof of this is what that does. But we got some kind of proof. If you take this medication, we can fix you. That's what the world offers. They have these theories. A theory of something of why I eat too much. Why I drink too much. Why I smoke too much. Why I drug too much. Why I exercise too much, why I have too much sex, why I have too much violence in my life, why I sleep too much. They got a theory and a drug for every one of them. <clears throat> God says, it's just your life. And I can show you a way out. You know, Suboxone is the number one drug smuggled into prisons in this country. So the prisons have agreed, and now they're giving it out. <coughs> if they only got along with all the alcoholics, we could have had a quad of booze brought in every day for us while we were in there. Right? Life would have been great. That's what they're saying. That's their answer to this issue that is life. The lust of my eyes wants something bigger, better, and more. A 
Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There's the battle. That's what I'm fighting. It doesn't say, smoke my herb and you will feel better from this. The world does. It says, this is what you're up against. This is what I'm fighting. Whether I have an issue or not, we all have an issue. It's one of the above. And they've labeled every single thing that you can possibly have as a disorder. So how does all that work? First James, uh, James chapter 1, verse 15. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when fully grown, brings forth death. Desire, right? What's desire? Lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh. Desire. I want this. So how come everybody's in jail? Because they took a thought, they attached desire to it, it became an action, and they ended up in jail for it. I had a thought of being violent towards someone. I attached the action to it. I've now caused the sin of violence. Right? Too much sex, too much gambling. I don't do too much gambling if I don't attach the thought of going to the store and buying a scratch ticket. If I think about going to the store and buying a scratch ticket, fine, I cast that down. But as soon as I attach, okay, I got a buck in my pocket, I know I can get a ticket, I'm in trouble already. Must be a disorder. Give me medication. <laughs> Romans 7, <laughs> verses 15 through 18. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Now that in the secular world, would be called a disorder. That's what I have. That makes me a person, a personality of flesh, who what everything I do, you can call a disorder. Or, I can agree with this book and say, I have a sin nature. I love that stuff. I love the lust of the eyes. I love the lust of the flesh. And I do. But the challenge is to cast those thoughts down, not attach desire to it, and go a different route than I went before. Beautiful. That's what I want to do. Proverbs 27, verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. I can't be satisfied. No matter what I do, I can't be satisfied. Until what? Until I listen to the full verse of the song. My chains are gone. I've been set free. From what? My disorder. <laughs> right? No, for my sin. Why? Because I'm not attaching desire to it. I am set free. Through Jesus Christ's death on that cross gives me a freedom so that I no longer have a disorder. I have a sin nature that I now start to understand, which I love to follow, but today I'm choosing not. First, I have to get away from the disorders, not drinking, not drugging, no more sex in, in the ways that we were doing it, no more gambling in the way we, we were doing it. Everything has to be done in balance, right? Take this pill, right? 
Take this pill. It's written all over the screen, right? All over the screen. Take this pill, you will lose weight, right? It's a trillion dollar business. Take this. Now, if you gave one pill to someone and it actually worked, they wouldn't be able to stock them. But if you read the fine print down the bottom, it says, with proper diet and exercise. <laughs> right? But in big letters, it says, take this pill. Right? Money. Right? Lust of the eyes. I want that. I want it to happen from a pill. I want a pill to fix me. It's not that simple. Balance and working our way out of it. Right? Why? Because I live in this destruction that I like. My eyes are never satisfied. Romans 7.19 for the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. How simple is that? How simple is that statement? Because I see evil. What's he? Oh, he's doing evil. Well, what's evil for me? Evil is not following what God wants me to do. He wants me to live a balanced life. So, and I'll say it, as simple as me going to get a coffee. When I go in to get my coffee now, right, I say to them, they say, how would you like it? And I say, well, today I'm dieting, so I only want three creams and three sugars. But when I'm not dieting, I get four creams and four sugars. <laughs> but that's really evil. As simple as that is, why is that evil? Because for me, who doesn't want this, I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing. So if I'm willing to break what I dislike right here, then I'm not doing what I really will to do. And what I really will to do is do some exercise, drop this little gut that I have, and just move on and get back in a little bit of shape. But I continue to show up at Dunkin' Donuts and get the coffee with the four sugars and the four creams. That's how simple this is. I'll only buy one more pack of cigarettes. I don't know how many gazillion packs of cigarettes I bought. <laughs> only buying one more. I'll only smoke half. I'll save half for later and then I'll smoke that half. The games that we played with evil, thinking that it's just okay. But I'm still playing with evil. It, does, it seems so much more difficult. I'm not sticking a needle in my arm. I must be doing really good. No, it's as simple as that cup of coffee. I'm violating <laughs> my will of wanting to do the right thing by this simple little thing. A little extra coffee, a little extra cream, and a little extra sugar. I'm violating what I really want to do. Right? That does not make me have a disorder. It means I'm just not putting up the good fight that I could put. Because I put it up against so many other things, I'm just willing to go with this one little evil in my life. Why? Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Because I'm hostile towards doing the right thing. I don't want to. And I don't have to. So I ain't going <laughs> to. But then I'm not getting the results that I really want in my life. Right? I just don't. I have those moments of just things aren't right. And I want them to be right. Well, then do what is right. Don't even go to dunks. Then I won't have the problem. I don't go to the bar anymore. I don't have that problem. I don't hang around in the streets and do the things that I shouldn't be doing anymore. I don't have that problem anymore. I ride reasonably well on my motorcycle. Right? And then evil comes in because I like to break the law. And no one's going to bother me. 
But why? Because I'm carnal towards that. Because I have a sin nature that loves this evil, even as slight as it is. And when I can play with a little evil, then I can play with a lot of evil another time. Right? If I let the devil in the back seat, sooner or later he's driving. He's going to take control of the whole, the whole vehicle. Someone steps in front of me. I don't know. Someone, someone said something to me the other day about their kid was in trouble. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Why wait? I need you to help me. Mine's in trouble. I'm going to help you. Let's go. We'll do it. Are you kidding me? I have a God that's more powerful than any issue on the planet, and I'm going to go take care of it. Why? Because I'm, I'm against God's will. Romans, chapter 7, 20 and 21. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. More and more I want to do good, but more and more I'm being attacked. Bob just wanted to come and hear a sermon today. Get hit in the head with a six-foot ball. <laughs> right? And how many other things were bounced upon us on the way here? Right up to the door. Right? How many things are attacking us while we're in here rather than resting in Him? Seeing what He brings. Oh, you like this one? Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but the good man will be satisfied from above. How easy is it to backslide? <coughs> I'll take four sugars instead of three. That's how, that's, I'm already backsliding. I'm already going down some place I should not have gone. Right? Then a little more, I let evil in the door. I didn't defend myself against this simple evil. Now the devil knows that I'm willing to slide. And my heart is kind of saying, you know what? I really should have went for six sugars. Today, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not, I want half decaf and half caffeine. <laughs> you should see me on that day. Right? But I know what that day is going to turn into for me over a stupid little thing like caffeine. Yet I was willing to chance that. I was willing to go through the emotional ride that I'm going to have at 3 o'clock in the morning of fear, doubt, and insecurity because I'm being attacked from the caffeine because I shouldn't have it. Well, what else am I going to be willing now that the devil knows a way to get at me? He knows I'm willing to follow something that he will place in front of me. Or can I be satisfied that God has taken care of everything? He has. He really has. No matter how bad my life has been at any given time, it's always come out good. You know, we... we we, it, so many things, in a week, in a week's time, so many things would happen. We went down to Gloucester, and we watched the boats go through this 30-foot canal. <clears throat> the tide goes in and out of there. And depending on which way the tide's going is how that boat's going to be running. So, you know, they, we just watched them all chase down the pole, try to stand on a pole full of grease, right? They got a 15-foot pole, 10 feet up in the air, out in the ocean, that everybody's going to go and try to run down the greasy pole and grab the flag just to say, I'm the one that got it this year. <laughs> Boy. That wasn't even the show. The show was watching the boats that were done watching that try to get back up the canal. <laughs> now here comes this boat. <laughs> it's full of kids. <clears throat> full of kids. And that, you know, it can't be their boat. It's got to be Dad's boat, right? Beautiful boat. Well, they just put the bridge back down. The water's a little high. It's a little higher than what the boat is. So they decide they're going to come in the canal, and, they're, oh, and then they go, uh-oh, 
slamming in reverse, but the tide is so fast it's sucking the boat into the canal. They can't pull this boat back up. Well, the big radar detector on the top was in the water. Because <laughs> it didn't fit under the bridge. All because they wanted to challenge the world. We can take on this little bit of water in the height of the bridge, it don't matter. I can do the pride of life. I got a boat full of people, I can do it. Do we go and we sit and we laugh. That's what we go on vacation and watch and laugh, the silliness that people do, that I would do. I would have done that if I was in charge of that boat at that time in my life. Right? Where do I start making the change? When I can look at that and say, that is me. Mm -hmm. That's the change. That is me. And I don't do that anymore because I don't want those results. Romans chapter 7, verse 22. For I delight in the law of God according to my inward man. I'd really rather not do those things. Right? I would really rather not drink all the coffee that I've been drinking. And I'll get to a point again where I stop drinking it, as I do. I really enjoyed being able to go with Trish down and sit and watch. Right? What an awesome time. We got no charges. <laughs> right? Weren't chased or harassed. Beautiful. Why? Because I'm not following the lust of my eyes. The lust of my flesh, right? Come on, we're down in Gloucester. This is party time, right? We got to sit in peace and comfort, right? Then we got to leave there, right? And the next day, we were going to go back to Gloucester, but I got a call from my other son. He's doing dog trials, so we got to go watch the dog trials. Incredible. It's absolutely incredible. We got to spend a day. My grandson's here today. Right? We got to take my grandson down to the dog trials with my son, his girlfriend, and my brand new granddaughter. And they wanted us to come. Wow. Why? Because I'm not following what I love to follow. I'm learning to love this way of life so much better. There's peace and harmony in it. There's an understanding. I came here this morning. I'm, I was vibrating a little bit. I'm having a tough day. It was kind of because of nothing. I didn't think anybody was going to show up today. I, mean, I was talking with Evelyn this morning. I said, Evelyn, you know, I don't think anybody's coming today. Because that's the attack, right? A little nervous, a little anxious. Go into a parking lot with 500 bikers and you got to speak about Jesus. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been nervous at all if I had a bag of dope in my pocket and wanted to sell it. But because I'm going to talk about Jesus, why? Because the world is against him. And yet because I'm for him, he strengthens me up and gives me <laughs> unbelievable power to work my way through these issues. I don't need medication. I don't need a cigarette. I don't need a cup of coffee. I don't need those things to fortify me. He does. Man. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Beautiful. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Man, I remember waking up in an alley in Lynn, just beaten, beaten down. Didn't know where I was, why I was there, but that was okay. That's what life was. That's all life was. Look what life has become. Look what life has given us, the community, right? A future 
and a hope. I have a hope, man. I have a hope. My, my children will invite me places. I have a hope that as my grandkids go, I'll be able to be part of it in some way or another. And it's happening. Like it never happened. Things in my life have changed so much. Romans chapter 7, verses 23 through 25. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. <clears throat> that statement right there is what the entire world calls a disorder. I don't care what the disorder is. That's what they're calling a disorder. The battle in my mind of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, against the obedience of following Christ and having peace in my life. Now, in the midst of this, you have to understand that there are, the brain is also a deteriorating organ that there are some medications for. I don't want people to run around and throw their medications out the window because I said something like this, but have it evaluated correctly to be sure that this is just not what life is. I've been given every drug you can possibly be given. I've been given every label you can possibly label somebody. My favorite was homicidal, suicidal, paranoid, schizophrenic. <laughs> Could sing it on the way out of the nut house door. <laughs> so they labeled me. I was 19 years old, and I believed every inch of it. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. For everything that I want to do good, God is going to back me up and stand there with me. If I need a job, he's going to hold the door open to the job that he wants to give me. Or I can try kicking in the door and making that job mine the one that I think I want to have. I can kick in the door and make a relationship happen that I believe God put together, but we're both getting arrested. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's in peace and in love and an abundance of just joy in your heart. Even in a struggle. Even more so in a struggle, you'll have a peace in your heart. Even though it may be a struggle to get through something, You'll have a peace going, I know God, you've got me. I talk of all my struggles that I have in life. And no matter how hard it has been up here, it always has had moments of peace through that, resting in Him. I have an understanding now that I am not a dirtbag. That that's just my sin nature that loves to do things that makes the world look at me that way because they only look at it in world terms. As long as I'll follow their rules and directions and not the Bibles, then I'll be okay. They loaded me up with so many drugs that I would sit in the corner and drool and they'd say, yep, he's good now. I couldn't tell you my name. But that's what the world wanted. Right? Why? The devil knew I was going to be here. Mm -hmm. He wanted me under his thumb. Mm -hmm. And he had me. Until grace showed up. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
grace gave me a way of life to be forgiven and to forgive. Man, with that in my life, I can overcome anything. Even though I may be on the floor crying in a puddle, there'll still be a grace in my heart and a convenience in my heart for peace. Why? Because those are God's thoughts towards me. I want to have a God. What kind of God? I want a God that just has nothing but love for me, no matter what I do. And he says, here I am. I say, thank you, Lord. You are the God I've always wanted. But let me go fix it. You have a seat. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was talking to someone outside who said, if I take this medication, I'll have a better life. Sit down, God. Let me go listen to them for a minute. Man, I follow what this is and what is this? Mm -hmm. That you give me peace, not of evil. Oh, man. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right? Boom. My world is coming apart, Lord. He says, that's all right. I got it all. No, 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 no. You don't know what my world is coming apart. Everything is going bad right now. You've got you to sit down for a second while I go figure out how I'm going to fix all this. Because it, no. Rest. Rest. There's my medication. Rest in me. Total peace. Total love. Total understanding in all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your words, Lord. Lift everybody up with these words today and encourage them, Lord. Beyond encourage them. Show them peace in their heart. If there's anybody here that doesn't get that, or anybody watching, Lord, <coughs> let them accept you now into their heart. Quietly in your own heart, say this prayer. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know. With that said, Lord, you know who's there. Touch their heart. Give them comfort. Give them peace. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.